Yeah. Um, so this talk is rather optimistically called how Git works. That turns out to be quite a big subject. So it's actually how some bits of Git work. I won't be covering any of this stuff um, because uh, I don't have time. Um, if you go away from one thing today, the most important thing to remember is that Git underneath is a directed acyclic graph. Everything that you do with Git is manipulating that. Um, and that's a terrible joke. I apologize, but I don't really. Um, so that's a directed acyclic graph. Um, the nodes in this graph are commits. Um, a commit is a snapshot of the repository at a given state, a given point in time. Um, and an edge shows the parentage between the commits, shows your history. Um, actually, an ode can be a bunch of different things, and a commit probably isn't what you think it is, but that's kind of irrelevant <laughs> uh, for the moment. That's, that's another talk. Um, so, okay, so here we have a repository. We have a bunch of commits with some, some history in them. A branch in Git is a reference to a commit. That's all. It's just a little post-it note stuck on the side of the commit um, that tells you where it is. Branches are not stored in the graph itself. They are tags on the side of it. Um, the history of a branch, therefore, consists of all the nodes in the graph that are direct ancestors of that head. This is different from Mercurial. This is very different from Mercurial, and that's important. In Mercurial, branches refer to two different things. Divergent chain sets are two people make a commit to the same node, and therefore it branches in two different directions, or named branches, which is what you probably think of when you think of branches. In Mercurial, a named branch, the branch itself forms part of the commit. That is, when you commit, the metadata for that commit includes all of your changes and also the name of the branch that you commit to. That does not happen in Git. So, we have our repository, we have our master branch pointing to the tip of the repository there. Head is a symbolic reference to the current checkout. What symbolic reference is, again, I'm not going to get into right now, um, but it's a magic reference. Uh, and it refers to your current checkout, which is your working copy. It can refer to either a branch directly by name or to an individual commit by the hash for that commit. In the latter case, where it is referring to an individual commit, that's what a detached head is. Again, not going to cover that. <laughs> um, a tag is different from a branch, which is probably not what you're expecting if you're used to the subversion way of thinking. A tag is both a node in the graph and a reference to that node. Um, because a tag can have some additional metadata, including a message and a GPG signature and things like that. Um, and the reference is just a handy way to find that tag. Um, I'm rushing through this because I want to get to some worked examples. Um, and finally, a remote reference is a reference that is owned by a remote server. Um, a remote tracking branch is one as a local branch that tracks a remote branch. There's a lot in remote tracking. I can't cover it here. It warrants a lightning talk because you like to get things wrong if you don't understand what's going on. But the most important thing to take away from that is the remote version of master is different from your version of master. They are different branches. They are different references. Um, and a lot of what you will be thinking about is trying to keep those things in sync. If you use source tree or something like that, it will mostly deal with this stuff or at least give you the information needed to deal with this stuff. But if you're working from the command line, you sort of have to be aware of it. Right, let's do some examples. Straightforward repository, uh, an initial commit with a master, and the head reference pointing to that. Um, we do some editing, we add our changes to the index, and we commit it. Um, and then we have two nodes like that, with master pointing to one of them, and the head reference we expect. So nothing particularly strange there so far. Um, we then decide we want to do some feature development, so we check out a branch. Uh, this shorthand here, checkout-b, is equivalent to branch, git branch, then git checkout. So we create the branch, which creates the tag that points to the same node, and then we check out that branch, which moves the head reference from master to our new branch reference. We then do our edit, edit, add, and commit again, and as you would expect, new node, uh, the feature branch, feature branch is pointing to our new node and the head is pointing to our feature branch. Okay, so we're done with this now. What we want to do is um, merge our feature branch back into master. Um, so we check out master, which moves the head back to master. And then we, oh, wait. 
that's not what we would expect when we do a merge. Um, <laughs> in case you didn't see that, when we merge our, ma merge our branch back into master, all that happens is the master tag moves up by one node. This is because Git is smart, um, and it spots that there haven't been any changes on the master branch in between you branching off and you merging the branch back in, so it does what's known as a fast forward. It simply moves the reference. Again, remember that branches are just labels. They are not in the commit data. They are not in the graph at all, so it can do this. It just moves the reference from master to um, the same node as your um, commit on the feature branch. So let's go back a little bit and go back to where we were. We've committed our feature, um, and master is still slightly behind. Um, this is the more conventional merge, and you can tell Git to do this by doing dash dash no ff. Um, and that will then create a pointless, superfluous node um, in the graph that is exactly the same as the head node of the extra widget branch, um, but it is separate to the one that master has. If that makes you feel happier about things, then you can do that. Um, so let's talk about working with um, a remote. So here I've cloned a remote repository. Um, my master points to it, the remote's master points to it. We're quite happy. Um, I sit around for ages, wait for a little bit. Someone else checks something in, um, and I go, oh, well, I need to fetch that. So git fetch is more or less analogous to hg pull. Um, git pull is something different, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but at this point, our master is behind the, um, the remote's master. So we merge it in, as we'd expect, and that gets us um, what we wanted. And again, we can do that with no fast forwards if you want. At this point, however, because we've created a new node, if we do it with no fast forwards, we are now ahead of the remote, and that's where you need to push. So if we go back to the start a second, and um, if we do a git pull, a pull is equivalent to a fetch and a merge. It is not the same as a mercurial, a mercurial pull. You will shoot your foot, shoot, shoot yourself in the foot if you don't remember this, uh, especially because pull takes a branch as a parameter. Um, and David Pond is probably well served to remember this one. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that in there. Um, so another example. Um, we have a, a, a checkout, um, our master is pointing the same node, we have branched to do some feature development. We do some feature development, we commit some awesome stuff. Um, and then we decide, oh, well, we'd better check to see if there's any updates in the repository that I care about, so we do a fetch. So we're now in this state, and this is where you will shoot yourself in the foot. Um, because, okay, oh, look, master's updated, I'd better go and update master. So I go and fet merge remote storage. Oh, no, that's not what I meant. I've merged remote's master into my branch because I'm still on my branch, and what I've done is I've merged it. So let's go back. We're just here. We're on our feature branch. Um, that's what you'll probably do if you think pull does the same as mercurial. You have pulled origin master. You are on your feature branch. It has fetched and merged. Um, your remote's master into your branch. Be aware of what branch you're on and what branch you're pulling. So what you're actually meant to do was check out master, merge remotes in, remotes master into your master, and then check out your feature branch again. Then once you're done, check out master again, merge your feature into it, and push. Um, so the best thing, to be honest, that you can do is play around um, yourself to make sure that you've got your head around this sort of thing. So from the command line, you can do this fairly straightforwardly, make a repo see, um, in it, edit, add, and commit into it, then make yourself a, a local origin um, that you can push to and pull from from your other repo. Um, then you can clone your local origin into another repo and see what happens when you push and pull between um, various different repos like that. And if you use source tree at the same time to watch what's going on in all those repos, you should be able to see what's happening as you make those changes, what branch you're on, where you're merging stuff to, and what goes wrong. Um, I've rushed through that really quickly. I'll make the slides available um, after this talk, uh, and I hope that was useful.